On the AP exam, there will be four free response questions. This practice problem is modeled after FRQ3. Let's pretend it's from the 2012 exam. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. The figure shows Stephen and his friend together on a seesaw. Point B is at the top of Steve's head. As Steve sits on the seesaw, the height of B above the level ground periodically increases and decreases. At time t equals 0 seconds, B is at its lowest position, 24 inches above the level ground. At its highest position, B is 60 inches above the level ground. As Steve and his friend play on the seesaw, B will return back to its initial position every 3 seconds. The sinusoidal function h models the height of B above the level ground in inches as a function of time t in seconds. Part A. The graph of h and its dashed midline for two full cycles is shown. Five points, f, g, j, k, and p are labeled on the graph. No scale is indicated and no axes are presented. Determine possible coordinates t, h of t for the five points f, g, j, k, and p. Let's start by building a vertical scale that will reflect the key output values. Point B has a low of 24, so let's put a 24 at the lowest mark. B is 60 inches above the level ground at its highest position. So this mark will be 60. The midline will be the average of these two numbers. So let's add them up and divide by 2. So we need to do 60 plus 24 divided by 2. This is 84 divided by 2, which is 42. So that's the midline. Applying that vertical scale to our graph gives us the output coordinate for all five points. Next, we need to find the input coordinate for each point. At time t equals 0, b is at its lowest position. So we need to pick a low point on the graph and call it t equals 0. For example, we could call this position t equals 0. However, if we do that, input values to the left will be negative. There's nothing wrong with that, but I don't prefer that. I prefer to extend the graph one space to the left. Now I can call this low point t equals 0. This way, all the rest of my input values will be positive. Point B starts at its lowest point at t equals 0. Then it goes up and back down. B will return to its initial position every 3 seconds. That means that the next low point is t equals 3. Half of that will be the value of this mark right here, which you can either call 1.5 if you prefer to deal with decimals, or you can call it 3 over 2. I usually find that it's easier to work with fractions on problems like this that are not calculator active. Half of 3 over 2 is 3 over 4. We can use this first value after 0 to find all of the remaining values. This is 1 3 over 4. The second mark is 2 times 3 over 4. The third mark will be 3 times 3 over 4. In other words, 9 over 4. The fourth mark is at 4 times 3 over 4, but the 4's cancel out and that's why you just see a 3. The fifth mark is at 5 times 3 over 4. In other words, 15 over 4. The sixth mark is at 6 times 3 over 4. This is 18 over 4, which reduces to 9 over 2. Now we have the input coordinates and the output coordinates for all five points, so let's make a list. Starting with point F, which is at 3 over 2, comma 60. 
point G is at 9 over 4, comma, 42. Point J is at 3, comma, 24. Point K is at 15 over 4, comma, 42. And point P is at 9 over 2, comma, 60. And that's it for part A. Part B. The function h can be written in the form h of t equals a times the sine of b times t plus c plus d. Find the values of constants a, b, c, and d. I need you to memorize what the graphs of these parent functions look like. Notice that the graph of cosine starts at its highest value and then goes to its lowest value and back to its highest value. So if we were graphing a cosine function, we would trace one period of a cosine function like this. h of t is the sine function after four transformations. So notice that the sine function starts on the midline and then goes to its highest value, then falls to its lowest value, and ends up back at the midline. So we need to trace a sine function over this graph. So let's start at the midline and then go up to the highest value and then trace down to the lowest value and then back to the midline. There's our sine function. Let's build an expression for h of t, filling in the values of a, b, c, and d as we go. The a value reflects the amplitude of the graph. It's the distance between the midline and the highest value on the graph. On our graph of h of t, the amplitude is 18, 60 minus 42. So that gives us the a value. In terms of transformations, this is a vertical dilation by a factor of 18 compared to the parent function. I'm going to save the b value for last. So let's move on to the c value, which indicates a horizontal translation. Notice that the parent function starts right at zero, whereas this period of h of t begins at three-fourths. That means that this period has been shifted three-fourths to the right. Back in unit one, we learned that in the equation, a horizontal translation shows up as the opposite of what it appears. So a horizontal translation of positive 3 over 4 will show up here as minus 3 over 4. And that is the value of c. By the way, in the context of periodic functions, a horizontal translation is called a phase shift. So instead of saying that there was a horizontal translation by 3 fourths, we say there was a phase shift of 3 fourths. The value of d reflects a vertical translation. So notice that the parent function has a midline right at 0. But h of t has a midline at 42. That means we can look at this as a vertical translation by 42. So the d value is 42. Now let's go back and find the value of b. I want you to memorize this b value formula, which works for sine functions and cosine functions. The b value is 2 pi divided by the period. In this case, we found that the period was 3. So the value of b is 2 pi over 3, and we can just fill that in right here. That's it for part b. You are allowed to leave your answer as an expression for h of t with the values of a, b, c, and d filled in. However, they will provide an answer box, so if you prefer to fill in the values of a, b, c, and d like this, you may. If you use the answer box, this is what they will grade, and they will ignore this work. Or you can leave the answer box blank and record your answer just like this. Part C. Refer to the graph of h in part a. The t-coordinate of f is t1, and the t-coordinate of g is t2. 
So this is T1 and this is T2. See part 1. On the interval from T1 to T2, which of the following is true about H? Is H positive and increasing, positive and decreasing, negative and increasing, or negative and decreasing? First of all, H is definitely positive on this interval because all of the output values are between 42 and 60. These are all positive numbers. Also, on the interval from T1 to T2, H of T is decreasing because it is falling from left to right. So on the interval from T1 to T2, H of T is positive and decreasing. So the answer is B. C part 2. Describe how the rate of change of H is changing on the interval from T1 to T2. In Unit 1, we learn that when H of T is concave up, the rate of change is increasing, and when H of T is concave down, the rate of change is decreasing. On the interval from T1 to T2, H of T is concave down. Therefore, the rate of change is decreasing. They did not ask us to justify our answer, so it's safest to give a one-word response. Just say decreasing. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.